But the strong one of KB60 is also a strong contender. She has the royal arm, is the right age, and bears the most striking facial resemblance to the Tutmosis family. She was clearly also a queen. What's most interesting about this mummy is the teeth condition. Now, this mummy had a very bad oral hygiene. No. Definitely, I would say that she has experienced a lot of pain from her teeth. We will be focusing on these two mummies in particular, trying to see what's, what's with and what's against each to be Queen Hatshepsut. These molecular geneticists, headed by Dr. Yahia Zakaria, plan to compare the DNA of the queens with Hatshepsut's known relatives to see which one, if either, matches. The one which will show matching DNA fingerprint will be Hatshepsut. The enemy of any DNA hunt is contamination. If a single molecule from another source gets into the sample, the test will be compromised. So Hawass has decided to build a sterile lab inside the Cairo Museum. It is Egypt's first ancient DNA lab, one of a few in the world built just for studying mummy DNA. The first time you try anything like this, it's always a voyage of discovery. Do we have another bottle? Senior forensic specialist Nicola Oldroyd and ancient DNA expert Dr. Anjali Corthals have come to Cairo to train the Egyptian team on this cutting edge technology. We've been working on this system for about the last two years and it's specifically designed to help with the amplification of very degraded and compromised samples. Hawass observes as they begin with a strong mummy from KV60. You're going to take the samples from her. We'll start the first one from the pelvic bone. Mm, okay. Once they choose the best